Joining us now, former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, retired Admiral James DeVries, and New York Times diplomatic correspondent Michael Crowley. Welcome both. Admiral, first to you. We see the video coming out of Kyiv. It is heartbreaking. It's a war crime. I mean, it's horrendous. The latest Russian missile strike hitting a children's hospital, not just a civilian area, but a children's hospital. So this is going to be part of the discussion. Um, NATO has stepped up. Europe has stepped up. Now the U.S. belatedly has stepped up. But they, they want to look forward. They want to look towards, you know, getting those weapons online, training, um, long-range issues, as well as reconstruction and post-war. You're right to draw a line under the video we just saw. They ought to be running that on loop for all those heads of state and government. There'll be uh, 40 different leaders. They ought to be running that on loop because that's what we are standing against. That is a war crime of a vicious and obvious nature. So job one, you're right, will continue to be uh, how the alliance can stand strongly behind Ukraine. And one thing I think you'll see a practical thing, the alliance will send a permanent representative forward to Kyiv to coordinate NATO uh, aid, military, and above all, the implementation of using these F-16s, which are going to come online, the fighter aircraft that are being supplied from across the alliance. So there's uh, an enormous work to do, but clearly the alliance will be doing all it can to signal real resolve in the face of this kind of Russian barbarity now extending into its third year. Uh, I want to get Michael into this as well, but let me just ask you, if they had more air defense, if they had more patriots online, and I know the U.S. is short of patriots, they've been scouring the world, getting them sent from other countries, parts here and parts there, uh, but would, is there any way that they could have defended against this? Uh, if we had uh, early on gotten the F-16 aircraft in the hands of the Ukrainians, they could have been there uh, as, as early as a year ago, by my estimate, if we had committed at the beginning. Yes, Patriots, very helpful. Um, those are being sourced from around the world. I think you'll see seven to ten new batteries landing soon. All of that will contribute to what President Zelensky has consistently said, which is help us close the skies, help us close the skies over Ukraine. Uh, let's hope the alliance adds to that and also provides more offensive capability to the Ukrainians, not only the F-16s, but also uh, ATACMs, long-range cruise missiles, unleashing those against Russian targets. I think all of that makes sense at this point. Michael Crowley, uh, we've, we've talked about this, you and I, uh, for so many, well, for years now. But Zelensky keeps coming, coming to Munich, and to the security conference, uh, asking for help, saying that he needs air defense. And we see this happening. Um, this could also be a signal to NATO as it's gathering, because they're talking about NATO membership down the road, a path to that. They're talking about a lot of things to help Zelensky um, against several NATO members who are getting tired of the war and are pressing for some accommodation. Yeah, that's right, Andrea. And the goal of this uh, summit is going to be to project unity, to say that we're standing together as an alliance and we are in it for the long haul against Russia. Of course, there are important divisions beneath the surface, including what to do about this strong desire that Zelensky and the Ukrainians have for full NATO membership, something that they're not going to get out of this summit. There's going to be some language addressing, you know, what that process will look like over time. But, uh, you know, few, certainly nowhere near a majority of the members are, are ready for that step now. And this summit will also be very forward looking in the sense of um, so much uncertainty about politics in the United States and in Europe. Um, will President, will Donald Trump return to the White House as President of the United States? Will right-wing forces that are skeptical of NATO and confrontation with Russia continue to rise in Europe, although there was a setback for the right in France? So that will be another big part of this summit, is trying to 
show that NATO can carry on. Well, and, and that's exactly the right setup. Um, we didn't work this out, but this was Joe Biden on Morning Joe talking about NATO um, and certainly alluding to the possibility of a Trump presidency. Let's watch. And by the way, I'm going to be have all these foreign leaders here. I've been in contact with the new British prime minister. With the, anyway, look, the, the country, the rest of the world is looking, our allies are looking for U.S. leadership. Who else, who else do you think could step in here and do this? I expanded NATO. I solidified NATO. And the contrast is quite obvious, Admiral. NATO members really want to talk, when I talk to European leaders, they want to talk about Trump proofing NATO against a Trump presidency. They're so nervous about it. Um, this is a big test for the president, but he can handle summits generally. They're set pieces. Um, and in some ways, members of Congress may be reluctant to be more aggressive against him. Democrats who are really worried about it, whether he can do this, do another four years may be more reluctant to do it while foreign leaders are in Washington. I think that's right. Um, it, it really is a tale of two presidents, this summit. One, the current president, and the other, the former president. And I've attended these summits. I've briefed uh, the heads of state and government on many occasions as Supreme Allied Commander. There's a public piece of this, and I think our president, our current president, will stand up very well there. Um, there is a, a second NATO conference that always goes on. It's the quiet conversations, the bilateral meetings, literally the chat over a cocktail. Um, that conversation will include former President Trump and concerns about could he uh, pull out of the alliance? Could he weaken the alliance? Could he capitulate on certain things to uh, a President Putin? I think you're exactly right. I've heard the same phrase. Trump proofing the alliance, and I'll close with this. Um, part of that conversation will include raising the limit, the level of defense spending from its current goal of 2%, which now two thirds of the nations are meeting. Should that be a, moved on to a stretch goal of 2.5%, I assure you the Europeans are having that conversation as well. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.